Welcome back. Business eyeing changes from the Trump administration. Two key issues for my next guest include immigration and trade. Joining me right now is David McLennan. He is chairman and CEO of Cargill, a major player in the agriculture and industrial products industry. It's good to see you, Dave. Thanks, Maria. Thank Great you so much here. for joining us. What do you want to see out of the Trump administration in terms of trade? Let's talk trade for a moment, because this is going to impact your growth story mm -hmm. 100 percent. Trade is crucial, I think, to the American economy. It's crucial to Cargill. We are a company that's been focused on trade. Uh, a significant part of agricultural exports are sold overseas, about 50 percent of soybeans, 50 to 60 percent of soybeans grown in the U.S., for example, are sold overseas. So trade is crucial to the economy. It's crucial to Cargill. Yeah, I know that. But I mean, the president has already started making comments to China. I mean, earlier this year, China agreed to begin importing U.S. beef. Mm -hmm. America's trade deficit in goods and service with China totaled $347 billion last year. Mm -hmm. uh, trade reform makes sense, it mm -hmm. seems, when you look at the deficits. How do you want it to look different in terms of the beef business? Well, I think relative to the beef going to China, that's a good thing. It's a good thing for the beef industry. It's a good thing for the economy. But I think what the president has done is talked about making trade more fair and make it more balanced. So to the extent that we have greater access to Chinese markets, something like beef as a product to get into China, that's a very positive thing. So I'm all, we're all in favor of more fair and balanced trade as long as the concept of open trade and free trade is still there. Well, do you think that he'll be able to move the needle? I mean, the president and his policies move the needle in terms of China. I mean, we've been trying to get a fair situation with China for a long time, haven't we? We have. And so I do. I'm optimistic. That, you are? Yeah, I am. I think we can get something done. I think I've already seen the Chinese government is looking at greater liberalization of their economy. Uh, where we have a significant business in China. So I'm optimistic that it'll move the needle in a positive way. Well, where is the growth coming from at Cargill right now? Well, we've got a couple of areas of growth. Our beef business in the U.S. is, is growing. Uh, people are eating more beef. I think they're rotating now out of chicken and and uh, I think the may, people may be a little tired of chicken in the last couple of years uh, so they are eating more beef. You really uh, see the trends firsthand. We do. It's true. Yeah. Yep. So I mean we see it immediately so we are the number two beef player in the U.S. So uh, also our, our aqua feed business. Uh, the world is going to eat more fish, more salmon, more shrimp, more tilapia. So we have a significant fish feed business in Cargill. Wow. And, wh and, and why do you feel that way, that the world is going to be eating more fish? Well, it's about health and consumer preferences are changing. People are more aware, especially in developed economies, about the food that they eat, what's in it, who made it. Mm. And so the rotation in the fish, people eating more healthy food uh, is a significant trend. This is such an important a point that you're making. I totally agree because this wellness trend right. has people looking for more fish. Cargill, Bill Gates, Richard Branson backing a startup that produces clean meat. What is clean meat? Explain this to us. How does the process work? Well, the process works, and it's, uh, you're referring to an investment we just announced called Memphis Meats, of which Richard Branson and Bill Gates are also investing as right. a startup, and is using cell technology to produce uh, chicken or duck in a, in, in a way that doesn't use the resources that traditional production of meat uses. So it's all about sustainability. It's about, uh, call it clean meat, if you will. Um, it's not going to replace the consumption of beef or chicken or duck overnight, but nonetheless, it's, it's a way to, to produce meat in a different alternative that isn't as resource intensive. Are you seeing a, a big reaction uh, to this? I mean, what, what kind of a reception are, are people giving you? Well, it's, it's early days, but I think that people recognize that it's something that is going to evolve over years. It's not going to happen overnight. I think the technology is still early, still nascent. And so it, it's, it's something that we're still working on. Let me ask you the environment for your business right now, because we just saw the DuPont uh, Dow mm. deal try to take place. A lot of uh, activist investors trying to get that going, uh, the, the deal falling apart. What's your take on, on the impact? Well, the impact is, I think it's, it's evident that two companies like this, it shows what's changing in the food industry. So to, there is consolidation going on, and whether it be in traditional food or biotechnology or two science-based companies that have come together uh, and then are ultimately going to break into three different companies. Yeah. But I think it's evidence that the food industry is changing really quickly. And you see more deals on the horizon? I think so. I think particularly in ag supply, it's been a difficult time for companies in the ag supply chain. Great to see you, David. Thanks, Thanks so much Maria. for joining us. Thanks for having me. We'll